真位置。你好吗？ If your destination is quick taste, journey with me today as I explore a few new quick and easy recipes that will make every meal an adventure. Today, I'm going to show everybody how to make Buddhist braised winter squash, dinner oyster omelet, and oysters with port wine sauce. How's that sound? Huh? You know, when I was growing up, I eat a lot of squash, and I eat a lot of pumpkin, and a lot of hearty roots like all of these today. Now, kabocha. Acorn, sweet potato. Ah, this is good. Chayote. I love it. Nice and sweet when you stir fry. Yam, butternut squash, and this is the taro. All of these are very hearty roots. That when I was growing up, you can even make dumpling. You got with this. It's a lot of things. Now, I think our, our microwave have just cooked, partially cooked. Our food is ready. Ah, this is really nice. This is the wonderful. Kabocha, I love it. It's very sweet, and we can cook this and show you. You got so many ways you can do with this. The first thing you do is you cut this up. Ha! Ah! Ah! Oh, look at this. And then you cut this up. Now this is really hard. So what you do is you cut this in half again. I think I might need some help. How many of you love squash? You love squash. Allison loves squash. Everybody loves squash, but I only need one help. So Allison, please come. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to cut this up a little bit first. Cut it up a little bit. Now this is a good way to do it. And after that, we can peel it, get rid of the seed. Do me a favor. Let's come over. This is your workstation here. As you love squash, you got to work on the squash and work with me, and then. Now let's uh, give you um, a spoon to to scoop off scoop the out seed. The, let's scoop okay. out the seed. Oh, no Easier big deal. Easier to do the seeds before I. Yes. Okay. And then you do it up. And then in the meantime, while you're doing all of these, I'm gonna get all the other ingredients ready. You know that. I think I'm here a while. Oh, you know what? This is, you're doing a fine job. <laughs> and because you love squash, you've been eating kabocha and squash for the last 20 years. You're an expert. She is the expert on it. Wow, oh, look at that. Okay, now, as I travel all over Asia, or when I was growing up in China, in many parts of China, they, on the roadside stand, you can actually buy uh, what they call the wui fan shu, the big potato, or big sweet potato, or big yam. Now, this, look at me, let me show you. You cut it up just like big. Look at this, I open it up, it looks like this, look at that. Mm. And it's, you know what? It is so good. I am gonna show you. This is so good, so sweet. It's unreal. Alison, taste. Mmm, very good. Very good. You know, and I'm gonna serve this to everybody, and I hope everybody listen to this. This is called fan shi, fan. Fancy shi. That means it is squash. From the uh, root from the west, from Lo Fan, I mean, not from the China, okay? And then we'll put this over here. We can bake them, we can steam them, we can stir fry them, we can do all kinds of things. And the next thing we want to do is we want to peel some sweet potato. And then this is sweet potato, and you can use either yam or sweet potato. And we're going to peel it, okay? Look at this. What's the difference between a yam and a sweet potato? How many know what is the difference between a yam and a sweet potato? <laughs> you don't know? I'll tell you next time. <laughs> uh, that's what it is. Both yam and sweet potato. The color is different. Yam and sweet potato. And so, you know what? Sweet potato is actually more yellowish and sweeter. And that's why they call sweet potato. And then put this over here. And they have similar texture and similar shape. And then you can interchangeable. Use it interchangeably. Okay, when this all nice and peeled, I'm gonna cut it into slices, okay? Mm, make sure you peel them. Make sure you peel them. And then I always use a, the knife as a spatula. I transfer food from a, ha! Huh, nice and clean, okay? And then I cut this up into thin slices like this. Why Allison is cutting it up, I'm also cutting it up. While I'm cutting this up, I wanna show you the other ingredient I'm gonna use. I have 
wood ear. This is dry wood ear. Mo ye, everybody. Mo ye, mo ye. Wood ear. Ear means elephant ear. When you soak them in water, they become three times as big. Look at this. Original and quadruple size. And then you soak them, and then you can drill in them. You can use all kind of mo ye wood ear and yam and kabocha to make our next dish. Allison and I will finish preparing this squash dish, and I'll show you a special town in the beautiful island of Taiwan. Allison, good job. And then we'll put all the squash and sweet potato right here and put some vegetarian broth to make our Buddhist braised winter squash. And then some coconut milk. Rather than milk, you use coconut milk. And then we'll let it sit there and let it braise. Why I'm doing that, we can also show you, we can cut up, Allison is gonna cut up some uh, wood ear, okay? Slice some wood ear, okay? And you know, some of my most memorable meals come not from a cookbook, but a guidebook. Not by following a recipe, but following my nose and my feet. Let me show you. Believe it or not, this is the main street in Jiuven, an old gold mining town in northeastern Taiwan. Today, the gold is all gone. But in this place, are artists, scenic beauty, and great food that appeals to visitors from around the world. I'm learning from the master. These are the third generation of the grandmom's fishball soup specialty shop. First, you start with the fish mousse, and it's got a stuffing. The stuffing is actually ground meat, chopped green onion, and all the wonderful spices. And then you stuck a little bit of this stuffing. And that's a very unique way to do it. Huh? Look at this. I'm learning from the master here. This is meat fuel fish ball. Mmm. You know what? Not only Yang can go, so can he. <laughs> the reason why it's so good is these people have, have been doing all this fish ball for almost 60 years. Ah, on the other side of the street, we're only about four feet away. Ah, there's some, something very unique. Have you ever seen hot dog with a pork bone inside? Mmm, the bone actually flavor the hot dog. I love it. This is the best hot dog I have ever tasted. This is the three generation traditional chicken roll. Revealing a secret. Oh, onions, spices, seasoning, and chicken, diced chicken. This is dry tofu sheet. Mm, roll it up, roll it up with a tiny bit of flour. And then you deep fry this. Actually, this particular recipe won the gold medal for traditional Taiwanese snack. Oh, now, beautiful. Let's cut in pieces. Mmm. Outside, crispy, golden brown. Inside, moist, juicy, and delicious. Ah, see, 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 see. Mm, see, see. Another wonderful secret that I learned from the chef. This man is having a ball. Uh, not one ball, a lot of balls. He's making meatball with a lot of seasoning. Every single ball, same size, same shape. You can tell when the balls are cooked, they flow on top of the broth. That is ready to be served. Mm. Here's one of my favorite, big, a traditionally big sweet potato, sweet yam, local specialty. Mm. Yeah, wow, it looks look like, like this. Uh, he has been doing this, gentleman, he has been doing it for 45 years. Mm, nice and sweet. A lot of starch, nice and sweet. I'm gonna keep it. And food isn't the only reason to visit this cultural gold mine. This gentleman, is the master of Chinese choreography. The master is translating my last name, Yan. Nangju means can cook. It means Yan can cook in Chinese. When a master finishes work of art and the poem, put his seal. This is his seal. Look at that. Yan can cook delicious meal, 
So welcome all the guests and come and enjoy his great meal. Thank you so much. And now it is time for peak experience, a visit to one of Jiu Fen's most scenic tea houses, perched right on the edge of the mountainside. You know, much more than a mealtime beverage, tea is often the main feature in the social gathering in Taiwan and many parts of China. This is the Ko Mountain Wulong, one of the best tea in Taiwan. First, the tea leaves go into the pot. You know, now, you know why you put the tea in the tea pitcher? Because when you brew, directly pour the tea from the teapot, every single cup will have a different string. The first cup will be lighter than the last cup. By doing this, every single cup is uniform. Everything is done the traditional way here. Even the charcoal file they use to heat up the kettle. And it all comes through in the flavor of the tea. Mm. This is a little teacup right on your nose. When you are tasting it, you can smell the aroma. Oh, beautiful. Another great design in this tea house is the waterfall behind me and the very colorful carp or koi swimming freely in this pond. You know what? In Chinese culture, koi or carp symbolize freedom and tranquility. Take my advice. Sometimes you should slow down and just look at the carp. You'll feel good. It calms you down. Allison, do me a favor. Fill up a couple of eggs for me. And uh, when I was growing up, this is how my mom teach me how to do it. Use a chopstick. But you can do whatever you want. You got this, and you got this. You got a lot of eggs. Do me a favor. Let's build up some. I'm gonna make the, the omelet because I'm gonna make dinner oyster omelet. How many of you love oyster? Oyster in Chinese is ho, sin ho. Say sin. It means fresh. Ho means oyster. When you go to the store and buy them, you can buy them in a little jar like this, okay? Big jar, small jar. The first thing you do is you drain them, okay? You drain them out, you see? You drain them. Save this. Recycle. Never throw anything away. Let them drain. For the Chinese, what they normally do is, after you drain them, they put a tiny bit of salt, okay? Tiny bit of salt, a tiny bit of cornstarch. Why use salt and cornstarch? The whole idea is to kind of clean up the oyster a little bit. So then I water blanched them a little bit. Not boil, but water blanch. Why water blanch? I want to partially shrink a little bit, okay? I have some water here. I'm gonna put it right over here and I will uh, water blanch them a little bit, okay? Water blanch them. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna add the rest of the stuff in my Buddhas braised winter squash. I have some zucchini and some wood ear that Allison was so gracious. Look how beautifully sliced. I'm going to put them all here. Look at that. Scoop them a little bit. Make sure they look wonderful. And then cover up and continue to let it braise medium low heat. How's that done? Oh, this is perfect. Very nice. If I were you, I would practice. Uh, see? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a whole bunch of stuff over here. I am going to add some Chinese chai. This is Chinese chai, gao choy. Smell it. It's got a very, very mm. strong, very, very interesting, intense flavor. What you do is you use a knife and you just cut it up like this. Cut, uh, cut, 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 cut. And then you put it right over here. Look at that. And then you can also cut up a tiny bit of Ah, cilantro. Okay. I love cilantro, okay? Because it's very, very good, okay? You know what? The, the, great, the great thing is, Ellison, you have done such a good job. I think you deserve a little break. And let's give Ellison a round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful, helping out, okay? And then, and then I'm gonna have, graze some uh, carrot. I'm gonna put it, give some color contrast, okay? Give some color contrast. Chive, bean sprout, carrot, all of this, and cilantro, 
nice flavor, okay? And then, tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of pepper, and I also put a tiny bit of garlic, and also, tiny, tiny bit of, you know what? A tiny bit of cornstarch. Now, this is nice, basically, wonderful. You scoop it out, they shrink a little bit, see? And they shrink a little bit. I'm gonna use half of these for one dish, another half for the other dish, okay? In the meantime, I'm gonna show you. Half of these, is shrink a little bit, is for my omelet. Half of it for my pork. Oh, this is beautiful. Here, I put a tiny bit of oil. Very easy, okay? Make sure, a tiny bit of garlic, salt, and then I put the cornstarch because I want to make sure the water is gone, okay? And then the cornstarch is in, and look at this. Oh, look at this. Mmm, look at that. And this is going to be the omelet. Mmm, shake it, shake it, shake it. It is so easy to do. Cook it quick, cook it easy. Next, I'll cook up the rest of the oyster in a pot sauce too. Whoa! My squash is marvelous. Buddhist braised winter squash is ready to be served. Now, I'm gonna do oysters in a pot wine sauce. Let's get some ginger ready. Peel the ginger. Mm, make sure we peel all the ginger. You see this? This is how I peel the ginger, okay? Once the ginger is peeled, then we'll mince the ginger and put it in here. Mince the ginger and put it in here because we are gonna save all of these to make a simple dish, okay? Oyster. Everybody loves oyster. If you go to Louisiana, everybody, they actually drink raw oyster as a competition. And one time I drink 10 glasses of oyster, each one have 12 of this. Swallow. Tiny bit of oil, ginger, and garlic. Ginger and garlic goes really well with oyster. Chinese love oyster. They deep fry the oyster. They pan fry the oyster. They make omelet with oyster. Put them right here. Mmm, look at this. Mmm. Put a tiny bit of green onion. Ah. And a tiny bit of port wine. Ah, look at this. Whoa, port wine. Ah, seafood flavor. Fish sauce, a tiny bit of oyster sauce. Mm. And also a tiny bit of soy sauce, give that nice, rich, savory taste. In the meantime, we'll cover up and let it simmer. And I think we can get ready to play all of these. My omelet is getting beautiful. And I slide the whole omelet right here. Look at how beautiful this omelet is. Beautiful omelet. Hey, how about my squash? Mmm, my squash is right here. Look at this. I'm gonna put all of these. Ah, look at this. My squash is so beautiful. And this is absolutely wonderful. Look at this. Isn't it nice? Beautiful, everybody, huh? Look at this. Huh? It is so nice. Look at this. This is the squash. We'll put the squash right over here. We'll put the omelet over, right over here. You know what? You want to make some sauce for your omelet, right? Here, soy sauce, chili, garlic sauce, a tiny bit of balsamic vinegar, or jinjang vinegar, ji cho. And then a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. Mix them all up. Then you have a beautiful dressing for your oyster omelet. Look at this. Ah, look at how beautiful. Oyster, oyster, oyster. This is how you should serve this. In the meantime, I'm gonna also put some pistachio nut, give the extra texture, contrast. Ah, how about some beautiful ah, green onion, roasted. And, and you can put it in the fridge and slice it up. And in the meantime, look at that. Oh, this is so beautiful. Look at that. And then you know what? I'm gonna use this to thicken this up a little bit. Ah, look at this. Slightly thicken this up a little bit with Water or broth, okay, always, always make sure you have this on the side, okay? And this is ready. It doesn't take too long. This is so beautiful, okay? More port wine if you want. Oh, I like it. 
How about more port wine, everybody? Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, a tiny bit of extra woo, fish sauce and some fresh green onion. And you know what? Ready to be served. And we'll play this right over here. And this is such a beautiful dish. And then, you know what? This is a complete meal for everybody. We have oyster and oyster today. Remember, if Yan can cook and walk at the same time, then so can you. Everybody, Chai Jen. Whoa, very, very strong. This is the regular distilled white vinegar. Very strong, acidity, 5.1%. The Japanese, they use rice to make a lot of the vinegar. Here is the regular rice vinegar in this kind of color. This is sweetened, seasoned rice vinegar. Ah, let's see, this is the regular distilled vinegar. Mmm, very, very sour, very strong. This is the vinegar made from rice. Mm. Very nice, nice balance, 24.1% acidity. Mm. This one is flavor with sugar, seasoned rice vinegar. Mm. Well done, sweet and sour. You know, vinegar is very widely used in Chinese restaurants. Without vinegar, how can you have sweet and sour sauce? But a lot of times, Chinese vinegar is also used as a dipping sauce. Now, this is red vinegar. You can buy them in a bottle like this. Red vinegar, like this. Mm. Very, very smooth and nice. Mm. Everybody love balsamic vinegar. Dip the bread and do all kinds of things. You know what? This is the Chinese balsamic vinegar. Jingjiang vinegar, like this. Ah, let me put some regular balsamic vinegar right here. This is the Chinese one, one-fifth of the price. Very good. This is just as good, used as a dipping sauce, or mixed sweet and sour sauce. Sour tip for today.